Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars And let me see what spring is like on a Jupiter and Mars Looking at um, color coded here They did an exercise tolerance study and took um, people who had no ME, CFS, um, fibromyalgia, anything like that in that top row. Um, the middle row is folks with CFS, with and without fibromyalgia. And then the bottom was patients with multiple sclerosis. And they just wanted to see with all of these sensory, adrenergic, and immune um, expression, what was actually happening on a cellular level um, inside those, those cells. And if you look at the folks who have no predisposing illness, you know, there's not a lot going on. My pointer is going out here. I don't know what it's doing. It won't show. Okay. okay. Um, but on the top, you know, they, they drew blood at 30 minutes, 8 hours, 24, and then 48 hours out. Um, it doesn't, you don't even have to know what they're doing to look at that, that middle line with the CFS um, fibromyalgia folks to say, whoa, you know, look at the inflammation, um, look at what's happening with things like heart rate, um, look at um, the sensory includes things like um, heat response and things like that. So, you know, everything is out of whack. Um, when you look at them 24 hours, 48 hours after activity. So then you start to understand that post-exertional malaise that kicks in because look what's happening on the cellular level. Also, we touched a little bit on brain abnormalities. There's a lot going on in the brain um, that is helping us start to explain what we see symptomatically. The high lactate in the brain, um, they've actually documented a decreased amount of gray and white matter in the brain. Um, complement proteins in spinal fluid that help them distinguish MECFS from other um, conditions. Um, low function to multitasking challenge in neurocognitive tests. Um, my daughter never had tests, but she would have bombed them all. I mean, she really just got to the point where she could not function. She still struggles. She will tell me on days, she'll ask me why she's broken. You know, she knows that she can't keep things in her head. She lived in her head. She did numbers and math in her head. Never needed paper. And now she can't function in her head. Um, just really trashes everything. Um, hypoperfusion, they've done scans and even just looking at blood flow. There are now some doctors who actually feel that they can diagnose MECFS by looking at, you know, per brain perfusion and what's happening there. Um, they can distinguish on EEG um, MECFS from depression, um, which is a huge thing because my daughter had a pediatrician look her straight in the eye and tell her it was all in her head. And then turned to me and said, well, your son turned out all right. You know, that was after two years of tests and no answers. Um, so, you know, to me, it's huge to have things like EEGs where we can distinguish because it's just too easy to say it's all in your head because we don't know. And unfortunately, I mean, I was shocked. I've been a nurse for 20-some years, and I never heard that out of a doctor's mouth. <laughs> okay? No. <laughs> Let's leave now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and even things like dorsal root ganglionitis. So, again, lots of inflammation. Whoops. Lots of inflammation. Lots of things going on in the brain. Um, and, again, it explains what we see um, symptomatically. I'm here with um, a registered nurse, Doreen Williams, from um, Mercy Health in Grand Rapids. And um, Doreen, I want to ask you, why did you think it was important for your department, your pre- and post-op department, to um, have a in-service about fibromyalgia and ME? We see an awful lot of patients that come in with a diagnosis of mm -hmm. um, those syndromes or diagnoses. And, um, a lot of them are stereotyped as, you know, with it all in their head. Um, so it was just good to have um, knowledge on their scientific 
um, research that's behind their um, mm -hmm. symptoms and such. So we've learned a lot today um, on the myths or our misconceptions mm -hmm. of the diseases. Mm -hmm. We had some um, doctors here and then nurses in the pre and post op. Do you think that this will help them change their practice? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, just the simple vital signs that we can keep an eye on. You know, the temperatures that they run lower, um, normal baseline temps. Um, the treatment of pain. Um, you know, just to um, be empathetic and don't stereotype them when you first go in and see the patients mm -hmm. because they come in with long lists of medicines and allergies and such. Mm -hmm. um, this is a real devastating um, disease for these patients and we need to treat it as that. Mm -hmm. And understand the biological abnormalities that are happening in the body instead of just thinking that it's something they're making up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, um, the nurses and healthcare providers that have been here to the in-service today have been very um, enlightened and very glad that they came. Okay. Well, we want to thank you for inviting us. Um, we, en we enjoyed it, and we hope that we can um, bring this information to other departments within the hospital system. Okay. Thank, thank you. you.